Hello friends and subscribers, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World. My name is Daniel Rosal and this is my little tech corner here of the internet. Uh, so every time I say, hey, I'm done with optical media, there's one, one more topic that I think is interesting enough to do a video about. So today we're going to be talking about best practices in storing your optical media, aka the, the physical factor is concerned. Um, so there is an ISO standard for storing your optical media. It's ISO 18925, and the latest iteration I found was the 2013 update. There was about three updates over the years. Um, it is about 75 bucks, so I, uh, as I mentioned in some other videos this week, I've kind of uh, gone on a bit of an optical media purchasing spree lately, so I couldn't justify paying $70 for a 10-page PDF. Uh, but I did find some references that some websites resources from different archival organizations which reference the uh, this ISO standard. So I figured that was good enough for... Because uh, I, I don't think you need to worry crazy about this, but there are some kind of common sense recommendations there. Like all ISO recommendations, it's filed under an organization system, it's imaging materials, optical disk media storage practices. So because everything in optical kind of sort of loses steam in the in the tens uh this was it's kind of i haven't seen really many of these recommendations talking about blu-ray specifically um we've talked a lot on different videos about the different compositions possible with cds like verbatim's product that uses uh, gold for the archival grade and we looked at how blu-rays have been mostly throughout their life, HTL, using something called the Metal Ablative Recording Layer, or MABL, uh, which is an inorganic. So there is a little bit of difference in the composition of the recording layer, right? Not only there is different products, there is different dyes, and in the case of inorganic media like Blu-rays uh, and the M-Disc for that matter, they're inorganic. So the recording layer is a bit different, but the materials around might be fairly common. So... Basically, we never want to get, you know, we never want to get to the point where the recording layer is being damaged by the elements, put it like that. So I think from, I think that's probably why these limits are kind of offered across the board. But if you've seen Blu-ray specific limits, let me know. They're all different. This is what the ISO 18925 says in its opening. The average relative humidity of an extended store in of an extended term storage environment should be maintained between 20 and 50 percent RH. This is what they call the best practice. This is the gold standard, if you will. Um, the cycling, so we're going to talk about this, shall not be greater than plus or minus 10%. Uh, the maximum temperature should not get above 25 degrees. And a temperature below 23 degrees Celsius is preferable. For the Americans watching this, you can do the uh, conversions. The peak temperature shall not exceed 32 degrees. Generally, useful life will be increased by storing disks at low temperature. So you're, what you're aiming for here is a low temperature, a low RH, since chemical degradation is reduced to these conditions. Again, I would say this is probably less relevant for the inorganic media and the M disks because of the fact that those dyes, uh, the, sorry, that they don't use dyes. It's uh, in the M disk. It's kind of a composition of metals and inorganic material. In the HTL Blu-rays. It's some metal ablative recording layer. So I would personally reckon that, I mean, this is a whole idea, in fact, is, is that if you think about it, the whole idea of these products is that those materials should be less subject to degradation. So I would say uh, you, you'll have a bit more wiggle room with these, and that's another reason to use them. But if you're using the regular uh, organic stuff, even the archival grade, these would be the best ways that you can kind of uh, protect your media. So I've kind of just boiled it down to some, I think, really common sense ones. So keep it as I keep it as low as possible from temperature and humidity, but not too low. You don't want the discs to, to be subject to the freezing and thawing process ever, I would say. In fact, I do say. Um, and don't, again, these, when, you, when you're looking for places to plop your optical media archive, uh, avoid the temptation. Like I, I'm thinking of my in-laws where... Um, I'm storing my offsite archive. I picked I picked the cabinet pretty carefully um, based on what the house is like. They have moisture problems in the basement, and for that reason, I didn't store them uh, there. So uh, you know, you can get a temperature relative humidity sensor for a few bucks off Amazon and just take some readings around your house and kind of figure out where is most appropriate. Um, and secondly, not only the temperature, the humidity, it's the rate of change. 
uh, that we have to be careful about with optical media. Not only do we want it not to be too hot, too cold, too humid, too the opposite, too dry. We don't want rapidly changing conditions either. So just some other interesting tidbits. Uh, according to um, the Canadian Conservation Institute, the CCI, optical media shouldn't be subject to magnet sh magnetism shouldn't be a problem, right? Because with HDDs, it's a very complex mechanism, but it involves magnetism. And with optical media, one of the advantages of the medium for archival is the fact that we're just ablating a day or an inorganic layer with a laser. So magnetism isn't involved in the process of writing the material. And therefore, magnetism, like, you know, we, if you go on YouTube and you look for uh, destroying a hard drive with a magnet, you'll see some funny videos where they use progressively stronger magnets and eventually they kind of freeze up the hard drive. So that is an issue with HDDs, but for uh, for regular optical, it should be fine. The CCI say that, you know, screening x-rays in airports shouldn't harm them. Um, I My off-siting process is pretty ridiculous. I literally bring some... M discs in my suitcase once a year to another location and presumably the bag the check luggage is scanned every time and uh, the discs are fine so you'll hear you hear some people saying x-rays will ruin cds but uh, the cci says otherwise um, so the factors temperature gradient temperature temperature gradient rh and rh gradient now these are all the different specific recommendations from different sources and you can see that they're kind of all over the place they have some folks are more finicky regarding the different media. So, um, you know, you have, for instance, uh, minus 5 to 20, but then plus 5 to 20. But then the uh, library technical report in 1997 said they can get down to minus 10. So I would play cautious and uh, not go for, for freezing. But I think plus 5 to 20 is kind of reasonable. The temperature gradient shouldn't be. Here's the temperature gradient recommendations. The humidity um, and the maximum humidity. But let's just go back to the actual ISO standard and what they really recommend as ideal is 20 to 50 percent RH. Keep the room below 25 degrees, so don't put them in like a, a room that's absolutely baking hot. Uh, like you know, you might have an attic that's dry, but it gets really, really hot up there, so that would not be a good place to store them. And uh, you know, peak temperature not above 32 um so here's also then we have sunlight so this this is actually a photo i took of my own storage i took it for reddit just to like show my little collection but i don't actually store them like this uh, i store them in a box because this would have them this is next to a window and this would have them uh, exposed to sunlight so this is not something you'd not want to do uh, because sun uh, windows don't block all UV rays and UV is damaging. So you can see a pretty credible situation. I think the cake boxes have some UV protection coating, but I wouldn't really count on it, especially for cheap media. So you can see they're next to a window. There's sun coming in for 10 hours a day. They're getting drenched in UV light for 10 hours a day. That could ruin not only the written media, but even your blank media, potentially. So here's my salute. Here's my here's what I do. It's really, really simple. I just bought these little boxes off Amazon. And I just made sure they have a lid so that the also all the you know it's fully covered. I got these for like 20 bucks, like really basic stuff. But if you wanted to kind of up the up the ante a bit and go for something more robust, I looked ar I looked around. And I found these delightful looking aluminium cases uh, for CDs. Um, I, With everything in the world of optical, it's becoming harder to find some products. And a lot of products are taken off production. But uh, if you can find these, I think these are pretty awesome looking personally. Uh, but, you know, um, to each their own. Oh, and then I found one with uh, physical security built in as well, which I thought was pretty neat. Uh, so we've talked about encrypting your disks as uh, something you can definitely do. Uh, but if you want to kind of go real uh, James Bond on it and have a, you know, a briefcase of uh, of CDs. Now, this isn't actually, I would say, the best way. This uh, The previous product I like better because they it's intended for dual cases, whereas this has a binder mechanism. And I would recommend, um, I prefer the dual case solution. But you can probably find one with a dual case and a lock if you browse around. Um, so let's talk about that. So someone asked me in a comment a few days ago, do you recommend the binders or the jewel cases. So I kind of feel like the best practice is a jewel case. Each one is enclosed in its own box. Um, I I also use these though. Like I use these for off-siting stuff and I use these for 
less important backups. I use these for backups. For the archive stuff, I put everything in dual cases. For stuff like live live Linux CDs I'm keeping around in case I need them, I just use the I use these binder thingies just to take up a bit less room. But uh, if you're archiving really precious data and you want to do everything as well as you possibly can, my recommendation would be dual cases. You can get them cheap. Uh, you buy a few hundred of them and you'll be supplied for quite some time uh, for your archive. Um, so then, of course, we have to wonder, well, should you should you store those horizontally or vertically? People have different opinions on the internet, and this is just one of those things that I'm like... <laughs> Oh my gosh, everything is up for debate here. Uh, so I do horizontally personally, um, and some people, but some people have reasons for saying vertically is better. But I personally like the horizontal uh, one. But I, I, I reckon it doesn't really matter. So here's what I do just to show you guys, if, like you know, not a super elaborate system, but kind of something I think that's decent but pretty basic. This is my collection. I keep the hood on when I'm... This is just for the photograph. I took it off. So the little black boxes from Amazon. Bought a bunch of jewel cases. Put the discs in the jewel cases. Put the lid on. Put that out of the sun. Somewhere where there isn't any sun. And to me, that's kind of like, you know, good enough, basically. Oh, and a little Zigbee thing. So uh, if you want to really kind of, you know, be uh, make the system elegant and um, do it as well as possible. And I'm definitely... Um, definitely thinking about getting one that displays the temperature as well. So you could just get one of these. Uh, Zigbee is a smart home system, so it'll report back to an app. But you can also get a Wi-Fi smart home device. And that way you can, usually they have trend data that you can determine and you can just check it from your phone. Um, and you can even probably, I'm, I'm sure you can configure alerts as well. Like if the humidity goes above what do we say, 50, you'll get a notification if the temperature goes above this. So, you know, I, I don't think you need to be too extreme about it, but um, these are just some ideas I had. And the the more elaborate system would be getting a proper uh, humidity control cabinet, which certainly exists. The advantage of this here is this, this will keep the temperature and humidity perfectly stable. Uh, and I, I would, I'm guessing this is the absolute gold standard in terms of um, if you want to go full on with this protection now this one as you can see has a window so i would personally put some uv uh spray on that window that's what i would do if i had uh money to buy a few of these the only reason i don't like these is i think there's something nice about optical media archiving in the sense that you don't need electricity and that makes it kind of a there's no cost to it there's no ongoing cost and b arguably it's green as in sustainable now people will say well the metals used in cds aren't sustainable but so I, I kind of dislike this idea because although I think it's kind of cool, uh, you're kind of undoing some of the benefits, but you might, you know, feel otherwise. Anyway, that's the end of my presentation. Those are some thoughts I have for maintaining your optical media in good condition through monitoring the humidity temperature and other parameters. Basically, don't freeze your discs. Keep it moderately humid, moderately temperate. Keep the discs out of sunlight. Um, any UV rays by boxing them up. Jewel cases are better, I think. It's safe to say. And uh, that's really just about it. Thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful. Until the next video.